call today on behalf of the UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson. Global education is a top priority for him and for the United Kingdom. I'd like to thank my fellow co-hosts Norway and Ghana and of course UNESCO for convening so many of us today on such a vital issue. In my remarks at the start of this extraordinary meeting on Tuesday, I said that this is a crisis affecting every country. And what has been clear in the discussions of the last two days is, there, is that there are particular challenges facing low-income countries and we really must come together to step up support. As has been highlighted by many contributors to this meeting, even before COVID-19 struck, we were facing a learning crisis and hard-won improvements in access to education were not matched by improved quality. And the figures from World Bank and UNESCO suggest that globally over half of children could not read and understand a simple story by the age of 10. And in low-income countries, this figure was nearly nine in 10. And projections have shown that this global rate may have increased to 63%, driven by the massive disruption we've seen since the pandemic began. And that, of course, is a tragedy for each one of those children, but it's also a tra tragedy for their communities and for their nations. And they risk missing out on the long-term health and economic and social benefits that a quality education can secure. And to avert this tragedy, UNESCO have, have challenged us to, and asked us to reimagine and recommit to education. And I think reimagining education really requires taking tough decisions to prioritise what we know is effective. And next week, I'm looking forward to launching the Global Evidence Panel on Education with World Bank colleagues. And that reflects a growing global consensus of what is effective in getting children learning. And that's even more important as the economic and health pressures of COVID-19 begin to bite. And for the UK, the recommitment piece starts with political leadership. And all of us here today must work to elevate education as a core part of our COVID response. We believe that the girls' education should be central to this and we will be standing up for the right of every girl to 12 years of quality education. Next year, this will be at the heart of our G7 presidency so that the transformative power of girls' education really gets the political attention it deserves. And as PM Solberg explained so clearly, recommitment also means proper resourcing. And throughout the first months of the pandemic, the UK's protected education support in our aid programmes. But of course, we need so much more. Uh, next year, we we'll, are uh, delighted to be co-hosting the Financing Summit for the Global Partnership for Education with our good friends in the government of Kenya. And that replenishment has a rolling financial target of $5 billion for the next five years. But even that won't be enough. We must see innovative financial solutions to close the enormous financing gap, drawing in finance from additional sources, including the private sector. So we welcome the GEM 2020 declaration. It recognises the challenge we face, with all the many challenges we face. I particularly welcome the focus on marginalised, including girls, and the call to action on finance. I look forward to seeing the proposals from UNESCO to strengthen the SDG4 steering committee. And we know that before COVID-19 hit, that business as usual won't fix the learning crisis. So it's more important than ever that we raise our game and that we come together in an effort to reduce the global learning gap. And you can all count on the UK as a committed partner as we do so. Thank you.